but it's just, I mean, and that's the thing, like, whenever you watch, like, Ken Burns or something like that, and they do the, they do the lines, like, you can hear it, because it's like, you already, you have this, like, because the movie did such a good job of just... So, you brought up Ken Burns. Best baseball documentary there is? I mean, okay. Yes, in the sense that it is so just, in like, beautiful and just... Like I mean, it, it like it is a it is probably you got to say I think it's the best because of the size. Of it. Yes. My problem with it, and I again I watch that I watch that documentary every spring. I love it. Absolutely one of my favorite things on the planet. I understand he is a Red Sox fan, so you, yeah, and okay. that was my that is sometimes my issue. Is there's times where I'm like doesn't really you know like and I get it at the time the especially when the original was made hadn't won a World Series not you know because it was you know the first one was made in 92 you know when they did the when they did the first nine so you're gonna cram them in there as much as you can but then when it comes to the tenth inning like I told you again like when I you know when that came out we were all waiting on it oh my god you know we've been waiting 20 years for this thing me being excited because you had yeah, yeah. the Marlins, the youngest team to win a World Series, and the youngest team to win a World Series twice, and but it was like nothing. Like, yeah, nothing. there's two, one, and again, I I get that it is a huge part of baseball now, but you have the tenth inning, which is the longest inning, because it's its own thing. Like, you you know, it's like, and it's like you've got 20 years to talk about. They spend all the time in the world talking about the Yankees and the Red Sox, steroids, and it's like there's other stuff. There's the McGuire and Sosa chase, and it's, and it's which like, was like what they two minutes. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they'll touch on little things. And to me, if you're, and I mean, I get that you've got to move through 20 years. Yeah. You've got, and there's a lot more stuff. It's not like you know 1920 where you've got this stuff talked about. Then you. Know, I mean, I get there's a lot of stuff that people want to cram. There's in there. not dynasties like there were back in the 50, the 20s, the 30s, but the 40s, the like, 50s. You could the have, you could have done a very nice piece on the Red Sox without it having to become. And then plus, it's like some of the you know some of the commentators that they you know or that they had talking in the original series come back. They're kind of different. They're in a different place. There are there are definitely things I like about it. Okay. Um, I love the you know I love the Chris Rock thing where he goes off on the steroids thing and he's like, if you had if somebody walked up to you and was like, here's a pill and you'll make this much more money at your job, he's like, you would take that heartbeat. pill. Heartbeat. You would heartbeat. take that pill. Anybody, it is like in a heartbeat. But it's like, and I mean, I get it. But you like you and I have said in the past, like. It's a bad, I mean, I get, I'm not, you know, excusing anybody, but to me, it's like, what, you know, what the one guy said that one time, you want to put Bonds and those guys in there, put a little asterisk next time, like, hey, they played from this time to this time, and this is like, quote, unquote, stick, but you don't know. Obviously, Barry Bonds was on something, but if he says he didn't do it, I don't know. you prove, prove that, yeah, we're in a country where you're innocent to prove guilty. That's my thing. I don't, you know, I, I don't know what, I mean, you know, well, so-and-so said Roger Clemens did this. Well, that's great. Roger Clemens says he didn't. Can you prove that he did? No. Okay. Moving on. My, one of the greatest pitchers ever. Put him in the Hall of Fame. Put a little thing next to his name. Whatever. My biggest issue with the 10th inning. Yeah. Okay. So this whole documentary is about baseball, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What is the biggest moment of any season in baseball? World Series. So, back in any one or two, I can't remember, it's been a while, the 1903 World Series, we finally have a championship to decide who the best in the world is. You have the Red Stockings versus the Pirates. They weren't even called the Red Stockings then. Whatever the original name for the Boston Red Sox were. Against the Pirates. Awesome. 1903. And I know, I, I, I see you people know where I'm going with this, but a hundred years later, in 2003, is your 100th World Series. Granted, you are right, should have been Cubs-Red Sox, 
but somehow, some way, a not a better story, but a story that could rival the two curses. Yep. The team that should win the 100th World yep. Series, because they have 26 it's, of them. It's the, the, the Yankees, yep. the Empire. We are going to win the 100th anniversary of the World yep. Series at home because it's a seven against game an series. I mean, and, yeah, yeah. and against a scrappy, like, young, hey, our payroll is $50 million, your payroll is $200 million. Uh, Miami, New York South, as they like, as people have called it's it. Not even. It's neither here nor there. A store, the Empire versus the Young Rookies. Same thing as an 01, where it was the establishment versus the rookies. Got it. This is your 100th World Series. Every inning of this documentary hammers home important World Series. Shot heard around the world. The called shot. Uh, the catch. Every, every. This is your 100th anniversary of your World Series. What the, the 30 second bench? And it wasn't even the Marlins won the World Series. It was the Yankees yeah. lost. Yeah. And again, it's not, it's not you're talking the Yankees win another World Series. You've won two. This is a, still a story. Like, hey, this little team. Yep. Here you know, On the 100th anniversary, which shows that anything can happen in baseball. Anything. That this kid, because Josh Beckett was a kid back then, goes a complete game shutout against Jeter, Posada, Bernie, uh, Boone, which, you know, whatever, he just had that one moment, was, uh, just, like I said, that's, that's my problem with that series, uh, with that, is it's, again, I, you can't, because I mean, again, I mean, like, that's, I've had to, like, do that to myself a couple of times, like, here where it's, oh, God, he's talking about this again, but it's like, okay, he does spend almost an entire inning talking about the four you New York teams. Yeah. It's like, so, I mean, I get, it is, and that's what I'm saying, it is, the original nine inning uh, documentary, to me, that's what I, I mean, I like the 10th inning. It's informative, it's a necessary thing. But yeah, I whenever I'm like putting it up against other documentaries, I would put it up like, there's one, um, it's, because you can't, it's just impossible to find. You can YouTube it, um, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about it before, but um, it's called uh, Ghost of Flatbush. No, and it's. Heard of it. um, I think it's it's either an HBO or Showtime. You know when they do those. Kind of HBO. Ones. Yes, I know. I know what you're talking about. It's HBO. Never it's seen it. Beautiful. I mean, it is to me. Like I mean, if because like I said, Ken Burns over because it's you know it's too expand. You know, there's too much included in it. It's you, oh, it's over ten hours long yeah. document. So I whatever mean. you want to know is probably yeah, in there based on. But I mean, as far as like just a normal little you know one or two hour documentary. This thing, it does such a great job. And it, I mean, those look, because I mean, like I said, the one, um, whatever it showed, I, I think you've probably seen it either way, but the one they did for Yankee Stadium, yeah, it's the same people that did that. And you know, I mean, you saw the Yankee Stadium when, you know, as Chaz Momentary doing narrating, the music in it, I mean, it's just, it's just emotional. They, they know how to capture it. Well, the dot, this one's on Brooklyn, obviously. And it just does such a great job of just, you know, putting you in that feel, and it's like obviously, it's like oh, you know, the Jackie Rob, you know, you just it just pulling at heartstrings left and right, and I mean that that in itself just by itself would just be great. But the thing that this documentary does, and I mean, you know, a lot of obviously a lot of people have you know their own personal opinions on it, but it goes into like the Walter O'Malley thing. Yes, and it this and don't get it's kind of like um you know with the ultimate warrior dvd where it's like these guys hated him these guys but it paints that middle picture yeah and that's how this is like you've got the people that are like walter o'malley's a son of a bitch this you know this is you know never gonna like you know and i get that but this documentary goes into the fact that like he wanted to build that he there was and these are my plans Ebbets Field was falling apart. Nobody, it was in the ghetto. People lived in the suburbs at that point. You, there was no parking. You had to build a new stadium. He goes to, you know, he's going to New York, like, I need to build a new stadium. All I need you to do is 
give me the permits to take down these buildings. That's all I need. I will pay for the stadium. I will do everything. I want the Dodgers belong in Brooklyn. This is it. And, you know, Moses, the guy that, you know, was in charge of everything in New York back then with all that stuff, was just like, absolutely not. He had, this is my focus, and this is where I feel that everything should be. And, and it just goes into the, it goes into all the letters and stuff of O'Malley just pleading with this guy, like, and it, it, it goes to the fact of you're like, he didn't have any option. Like, and the whole thing was, Moses was like, no, yeah, you, we want you to build a new stadium, but they wanted to build it where, you know, where yeah. Shea is. This is the center of, this is where I think that the baseball stadium should be, yada, yada. Hindsight, and, like 20 years later, he was right. And, 10 years later. Was... But, in O'Malley's vision, that's yeah. fine. Put the Giants there, that's, you know, that's fine. But the Dodgers are a Brooklyn team. Queens is not Brooklyn. And that was his argument. And they and they would. They would they would show like little interviews with fans that are like, well, what do you think about them going to Los Angeles? Like, I don't like it. And he's like, what do you think about them going to Queens? Well, I wouldn't like it either. Okay, well, and I get, if they're in Queens, you know, they're right there. You can, you know, you can drive. But they aren't going to be that neighborhood team no matter what. And so it, it, it goes, it does definitely, I mean, you know, the arguments, you know, whatever you feel about him, it, it may or may not change your mind. But to me, it definitely puts that, for a younger fan, I'm not from Brooklyn, I didn't work, you know, so I don't have a personal investment. But you know, your whole life you grew up hearing like, oh, this is what he did, oh, he's a money-grubbing yeah. businessman that went to Los Angeles. And it's like, you know, when you read this, and it's like, and again, like they would have all these, these guys that worked with him, and they were like, he loved Brooklyn. But it was, but he also, you know, like, he had to take advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. And it's like, it, it, as much as, as much, as much as a fan of baseball I am, because I'm a fan of baseball again, we've talked about this, yeah. there were no Marlins when I was yeah. growing up, so I was a fan of baseball. I just happened to be a fan of the Cardinals because of my grandfather. I get it. Growing up, the fire sale of 97, the uh, fire sale of the Braves recently, I get it. It's a business. You need to make money to survive. I'd rather have a losing team and still make money yeah. as long as my team stays where I want my team to stay. I get that. But when you can't make money, yes, I don't own the Brooklyn Dodgers. He wants to move to LA. LA's giving them a better offer. It's what's best for business. I get it. Got it. So, and look what came out of it. Yeah. Baseball is, I mean, again, it probably would have happened sooner or later. It would have happened sooner or later, but right? the, the Rockies, the yeah. Mariners, or the Pilots, whatever you want to call them. But again, it's like you, like, I love that, like, this documentary, like, paints out. You can blame whoever you want, but the fact is, he couldn't have survived out there with the closest team being Minnesota. Yep. So the Giants had to go two. So you can blame that on New York, that they lost two baseball teams over a stupid, over, like, just because you wanted to get into a pissing contest. Yeah. You and, wanted one in Queens, you didn't want yeah. one in Brooklyn. And again, that's fine. Like, okay, we'll put Giants Stadium there. You know, it's like, here, like, so here it is. And then, like, yeah, like you said, and now where is Shea Stadium? Or where, you know, where was Shea Stadium? But right there, exactly. He got his little bridge. So, all right. Not counting baseball. Not counting Ken Burns' baseball. There are really three documentaries I truly do enjoy. And I'm going to just start with this one because I know everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, he's bringing this up again. 